to be praised and we worship him in spirit and in truth in the name of jesus hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah 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 thank you lord in the name of jesus i just want to welcome everyone on this evening glory to god i'm not going to be before you long glory to god in the name of jesus but before we move on i'm just going to open up in a praise and worship song glory to god and i just want everyone to get you know get your hearts get your mind get your body get your soul in the right standard with god and get in order with the spirit of the lord in the name of jesus glory to god lord if i find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart's cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are across the hottest desert i travel near or far for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king how many would do anything for his glory because it's not about i it's not about me it's not about self but it's about god how many will go glory to god to the hottest desert just to be where he's at glory to god for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king hallelujah thank you jesus because it's not about us people of god it's about god and it's about god getting the glory glory to god out of our life because see you don't want god's glory that's too much power glory to god you try to get god's glory you'll fall out on the floor somewhere you yeah you sure enough will be in heaven glory to god but it's about god's glory and how he wants to get the glory out of our life glory to god lord if i find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart's cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are across the hottest desert i travel near or far how many on tonight will cross the hottest desert glory to god i'm talking about the hottest hottest desert on the face of the earth just to be where he's at how many will travel near or far for your glory i will do anything how many will say on tonight yes god to your will yes god to your purpose yes god to your plan yes god all the way across the border god i don't i don't belong to myself god i understand that i i owe you my life god my life is in your hands god so whatever you want to do in my life god do it glory to god whatever you want to do it around me god glory to god do it god because i'm i don't belong to myself glory to god i want to be where you are i gotta be where you are i want to be where you are I gotta be where you are. How many want to be where God is? Where his presence is? Glory to God. Where you can feel him in the atmosphere. Glory to God. When you when you step in a room, glory to God, I don't care where you're at. When you go to church on Sundays, those that work um, 
those that fellowship on Sundays, before you even hit the door, the sanctuary door, I ain't talking about the doors to go into the sanctuary, but I'm talking about before you hit that church door, glory to God, before you leave out of your house, glory to God, you shall already, you shall feel the presence of the Lord. As a matter of fact, every single day of our life, glory to God, from the time we wake up, from the time we're about to lay our head on the pillow, you should be feeling God's glory. You should be feeling his presence, glory to God, in the atmosphere around you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because see, I see you got you gotta you gotta want to be in the presence of the Lord. Because when you're in the presence of the Lord, that's where you find comfort, that's where you find peace. Glory to God. That's where you your mind can be at ease. That's when your mind, everything that you're thinking about and worrying about on today, yesterday, the day before that, the day before that, the day before that, it can be at rest. Glory to God, because you're in the presence of the Lord. So you want to be where he's at. You got to be where he's at. It's a mandatory that you want to be in the presence of the Lord, not just on Sunday, not just on Saturday. Not just doing Bible study night, not just not just doing prayer night, but every single day, 365 days of the year, you should want to be in the presence of the Lord. 366 days of the year, when it's a leap year, you should want to be in the presence of the Lord. Winter, spring, summer, and fall, you should be wanting, you want to be in the presence of the Lord. Monday through Monday, you want to be in the presence of the Lord. Seven days a week, you want to be in the presence of the Lord. When the sun goes up and the sun co comes down, you want to be in the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's in the presence of the Lord where you find your peace. Glory to God. The peace that suppresses all understanding is in the presence of the Lord where you find comfort. It's in the presence of the Lord where your spirit is just overwhelmed and so filled with joy and happiness and all bubbly up inside. Glory to God. Because it's in the presence of the Lord. How many know when you're in the presence of the Lord, glory to God, you, you're able to hear God's voice. You'll be, be able to get an understanding of his word when he speaks to you, glory to God. And let me tell you something, when you're in the presence of the Lord, it's almost as if like you're going behind the veil, Glory to God, because how many of you know when you're in the presence of the Lord and when God reaches out his hand, and he takes his hand and he said, come follow me behind the veil. Do you not understand that the enemy can't even go behind the veil? Devils and demons can't even go behind the veil. All that stuff that you carrying the weight on your shoulder can't even enter in behind the veil. Come on down. Glory to God, because at some point in your life. All that stuff has to drop off and you have to get to the point in your life where you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, God, here you go. Okay, God, I'm releasing it. Okay, God, I, I, I'm turning it over to you. Okay, God, because I want to be in your will. I want to be in your presence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm telling you, it's in the presence of the Lord. I want to be where you are. I got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Hallelujah. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. Hallelujah, because he is our king. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Glory to God. When you enter into the presence of the Lord, Glory to God. Healing will begin to take place. When you enter into the presence of the Lord, deliverance will begin to take place. Glory to God. When you enter into the presence of the Lord, I don't care what you are facing. Glory to God. God can fix it. God can fix it. God can fix it. Glory to God. I don't care how strong 
that you think that stronghold is on your life. It ain't too strong for God because God can break anything. He's a God just like that. And he can do anything and everything. He is omnipresent. That means he is everywhere. He here, there, and everywhere. Glory to God. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he knows your beginning just as well as your ending. Glory to God. When you enter into the presence of the Lord, glory to God. I don't care what you're dealing with in your body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But when you enter into the presence of the Lord, glory to God. If you sure enough, sure enough believe like you say you believe, yes, the healing manifestation will begin to take place within you. Glory to God. Because I believe. I believe. What about you? What about you? When God comes to you in the midnight hour, when God comes to you at the eight o'clock hour, and when he says, take my hand, let's go behind the veil, glory to God, into the holies of holiness, glory to God. Even the enemy can't even enter into the holiness of holiness, glory to God. A demon can't even step foot into the holiness of holiness. A spirit, an ungodly spirit can't even enter into the holiness of holiness, glory to God. Glory to God. I give God the praise and I give him the glory and I give him the honor on tonight. God, I thank you for bringing us here on tonight. I do not take this day like you, Lord God. As I come before you, humbling myself with a heart of repentance, God, bound down into feet, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I come before you, God, asking for forgiveness. If I've done anything, setting God. Said anything knowing unknowing. I cancel every assignment of the enemy on tonight that's coming from the north, south, east, and west. The northwest, the southeast, in the name of Jesus. We cancel those assignments on tonight. I cancel every assignment of a curse, hex, vex, and spell. In the name of Jesus. I cancel every assignment of a spirit of backlash, retaliation, and vindication. In the name of Jesus. I cancel every assignment of a spiritual wickedness and high places, demonic activity in high places. The prince of of Persia, Prince of Policies, and the Prince of Darkness. In the name of Jesus, we cancel every assignment on tonight. In the name of Jesus, that was sent out to destroy, to bring about destruction, chaos, and confusion, mischief, mayhem. In the name of Jesus, violence, vengeance, wars, and rumors of wars. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Lord. For what you're doing in this land, Lord God. I thank you, God, how you are exposing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. How that you are showing up and, and, and letting people know that you are God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I give you glory and I give you honor, Lord God, where glory and honor is due. In Jesus' name, I say amen. Lord God, before I go into what, you know, was pressed upon my heart to go in, on tonight, I want to let you all know that in this hour, these critical hours, these darkest times and these darkest days in our life, God is exposing. Let me tell you, he's exposing from within Hollywood to the political office and into and in, in the body of Christ. So don't think that God is not exposing what's going on in this earthly realm because he is. It's that, that a lot of you all are not paying attention. Glory to God. As I was talking to my mother on um, this afternoon or this evening, and she was just, and I was explaining things to her, and then she began to ask me, "Have I heard s something about a certain person?" And I began to tell her. I said, "God is exposing people." And not only God is exposing people in the body of Christ, but God is exposing people in the political arena as well. God is exposing people in Hollywood as well. God is exposing because God is tired. People are dying left and right. God is taking up, taking people up out of here left and right. If you don't believe me, watch the news, read your newspaper, go to social media and, and see what's trending. You'll find out that pe healthy people, nothing was wrong with them, dropping dead, dropping dead, dropping dead. Nothing was wrong with them. And God, but God is not planning this hour. 
God is not playing in this hour. You know, he always say, I, he is God. We are not God. He is God. And I'm telling you, he's doing things in this hour to get our attention. And people are not, I'm telling you, people of God, you need to pay attention. I'm talking to myself too. We need to pay attention because you never know. You never know when, when, when something tragic will happen. And God, like, God will just do some things in an instant. Instantly. Because God is proving to us who he is. Who he is. And he is not playing with us. He is not playing at all. Like I told someone on today. Whatever you need to get right. Before this year. Is, before 2017 in. You need to get it right. I ain't talking about half right. Half stepping, a little bit stepping, a half a heart stepping, a half of forgiveness, a turning your nose up. I'm talking about whatever you need to get it right. If it's unforgiveness, you need to forgive. Ask God to forgive you and forgive yourself. Forgive the person that did something to you so that you can be able to move on. Whatever you need to get right in your own personal self. Because a lot of us need to get some things right personally within our soul. Whatever you need to get it right, you need to get it right right now. If that means turning your plate down, going before God and praying. If I can be transparent and personal. On yesterday, I was dealing with some things, issues in my home. And I sat on my side of my bed. And I said, you know something? I refuse to deal with this same situation in 2018. And I said, Lord, I'm going on a fast. I said, I'm going on a fast. Because I refuse to deal with a certain situation come January the 1st. I, it ain't happening. Nope, I'm tired of the devil. It ain't happening. I'm tired of being stressed out. It ain't happening. Not on, not not with Sharita. Whatever you need to get right before 2018. You know, 20, uh, uh, the number seven, I posted this on my Facebook page today. Seven means completion. Eight means new beginning. So whatever you need to complete before January the 1st, you need to complete it so that you can walk into your new, your new, your now, you know, new beginning, your now, so that you'll be able to receive all that God has for you in 2018. Because like, like I said, I do believe 2018 is the year of manifestations, signs, miracles, and wonders, supernatural, uh, ridiculous things that God is going to do in 2018. Now, he said, no weapon formed against me shall and will not prosper. But that every tongue shall rise up against you. You have the power to condemn. He never said that the weapon wasn't going to form. It's going to form, but it won't prosper. Whatever you need to do, whatever God is speaking in your spirit, whatever God has spoken to you personally. I'm not talking about you going to a prophet, getting a prophecy. No, I'm talking about what God had, because uh, some of y'all, God had a conversation with just you. But you wasn't listening. Some of y'all, God gave you a word in your, and he spoke something to you. He told you to do something before this year is out. He told you to get something in order before this year is out. He told you there was a personal conversation between you and God. In the realm of the spirit. And if you don't remember, all you got to do is ask God to bring it back to your remembrance. And God will bring it back to your remembrance. Glory to God. He will surely bring it back to your remembrance. <clears throat> Glory to God. So whatever it is that you need to get right before 2018, get it right. For real, for real. Get it right. Just like I told someone today and God had me tell many other people, you don't want to find God. God, you don't want God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You do not want God to find you in the same seat and the same spot 
this time next year. What the day is? November the 29th, 2017. You don't want God to find you um, November the 29th, 2018. And you still have not moved. You still have not done what God told you to do. You still surrounding yourself with the same people. You still have not come out of what God told you to come out of. You still did not disconnect from that person. You still did not do what the Lord told you to do. And it will be November 29th, 2018. And you still be sitting there telling yourself, yes, because you won't be telling God. You will be saying to yourself, I'm waiting on God. Because you're not telling that to God. Like I told somebody today, you're not telling that to God. You telling that to yourself, I'm waiting on God. And God is saying to us, I'm waiting on you. Because see, God already done what he had to do. It's a requirement that we do our part. And sitting around and telling God, I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. No, you're not. God waiting on you because he done everything that he, he's supposed to do. Now he said, now it's in your hands. Now is your turn. Now I, I have a requirement of you. There's some things I require of you to do. I, I moved on your behalf. I put things strategic, strategically in order. I orchestrated some things on your behalf. I've done this on your behalf. I've done that on your behalf. So now it's you. I'm waiting on you to do what I told you to do. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight, I just want to touch briefly on this subject uh, matter about the um, the prayer watch. Glory to God. Um, the, between the 12 a.m. and the 3 a.m. prayer watch is the third prayer watch. Glory to God. Um, the breaking of the day watch. But we all know that there are eight prayer watches. Glory to God. Um, the first one is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second is 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. The third is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. The fourth is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, the next one, the fifth one is 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, the sixth one is 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The seventh one is 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. The next one is, um, the eighth one is 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And a lot of people pray during these hours. A lot of people get up in, at 12 o'clock because I used to do it. And sometimes I pray at the 3 o'clock hour. And um, they pray during these hours. But a lot of people don't understand what is really taking place during these hours. They call these hours the witching hours or the bewitching hours because the, the, the hours between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m., there's a lot of demonic activity that is taking place. A lot of heavy. And when I say heavy, out of all eight prayer watches, th this is the hour that the heaviest and I'm talking about the heaviest demonic spiritual activity takes place within a three hour range and within three hours can you imagine within three hours 12 1 2 and three o'clock they done can you imagine a lot of heavy dark, demented, diabolical, demonic activity that takes place between the 12 a.m. and the 3 a.m. prayer watch. A lot of people won't, they teach on the prayer watches, but they really don't explain what takes place on the, this watch. I've heard a lot of people preach and teach and minister on the, um, the third prayer watch, but they really have not gone into detail and let the people of, and let the body of Christ know what exactly takes place during this hour. People always say, well, this is the bewitching hour. This is the witching hour. This is the hour that the devil is doing this and he's busy, but okay. What has actually happened? Because see, we, as a, as a believers, you need to know what's going on while you sleep. Glory to God. This is the hour.
middle of the night, half sleep, half woke, going to the bathroom, getting up in the midnight, going to get a drink of water or some coffee, and, and, and you don't really understand what is going on around you. What is happening? What is taking place? Why you sleep? You need to, you need to know this. You need to be aware of what the enemy is doing. And a lot of us that are believers, you are not even aware of the enemy's doing. It's almost as if you turned your eyes, you you blind, you are blinding your own self because it's like you don't care. And you should care. Why? Because it concerns you, it concerns your household, it concerns your children, your grandchildren. Yes, God is our protector. Yes, the Lord ain't gonna let nothing happen to us. Yes, He has assigned though our ministering angels to protect us. Yes, God is fighting on our behalf, but at the same time, you need to be aware. You need to be a brus. You need to know you need to know the information. Not only you not only you should be aware and know, but you need to know what you're praying against or praying to stop from happening. Glory to God. You ever wonder why you sleep in the middle of the night and, and you hear things and you wake up and you and you thought you heard something, but you brushed it off and said, Oh, that was nothing. Well, you heard what you heard. You ever wonder why if you was a little child and it was in the wee hours of the night or you or, or you may have children and it was in the wee hours of the night and your child probably woke up crying or, or howling or screaming and they tell you, mommy, daddy, I had a nightmare. You ever wonder why it could be one o'clock in the morning and you may be still up, not even aware and something in the corner of your eye just dot cross you or shoot cross you. And you look and you brush it off. Yeah, you saw what you saw. See, during this time of the night, the enemy uses this hour to do his diabolical stuff. The, the witches be up. They be chanting. They be be putting curses on people. They be uh, casting spells at and during this time of night. They be holding satanic rituals during this time of night. There are a lot of a lot of sacrifices. Let me tell you, human sacrifices, child sacrifices, baby sacrifices, blood sacrifices during the the, the witching hours between twelve and three a.m. There are a lot of plots and plans that uh, warlocks and sorcerers be doing at, at this night and nobody is praying everybody is sleeping the watchmen on the wall are not even watching no more and a lot of things are just slipping slipping past us and we wonder why all hell was breaking loose throughout the land we wonder why our household is turned upside downwards we wonder why this took place and you wonder why that took place because see that at night at that 12 a.m. hour, the enemy is passing out his, his assignments to his demons and to his imps and all this type of kind of stuff so he can plot and plan to bring about our destruction the next day. You know, uh, strange things happen when you wake up in the morning and you turn on your TV and you listen to the news and something took place and you're like, hmm, wow. Because, see, the enemy plots and plans for the next day. See, the 12 a.m. and the 3 a.m. hour is, is, is the witching hour, the bewitching hour, the hour where the enemy does his diabolical stuff that we need to be aware of and that we as a body of believers need to stop turning deaf ear on this stuff. Stop turning your face away to this stuff because you need to know this stuff. We need to know this stuff. I need to know this stuff. Your children need to know this stuff. You Don't be scared of no witch. 
God ain't, the thing is this, God has not given you the spirit of fear. You may be saying to yourself, Prophet Bray, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. What you afraid of? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and of sound mind. What are you afraid of? Let me tell you something. The enemy is more afraid of you than you afraid of him. Did you know that? I bet you ain't know that. When you come into a, see, he, he's not concerned when you don't know who you are. It's when you know who you are and when you find out who you are that he has a, he's, he gets scared. Do you not understand when you wake up in the morning, he, he trembling and he's shaking because he don't know what you, he don't know what God and dropped in your spirit to do. Demons are more afraid of you than you are afraid of them. So what is the issue? Spirits, ungodly, unholy spirits are more afraid of you than you are afraid of them. And you be you probably saying, well, Prophet's right. Why are they afraid of me? Don't you got the spirit of God that lives and dwells within you? Aren't you filled with the Holy Spirit? Every time when you speak the name of Jesus out of your mouth, the demons and devils and the enemy shall tremble in the presence of they have to succumb to the name of Jesus Christ because it is in that name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So why are you afraid? If you have the spirit of the Lord dwelling and living within your soul, in your body, in your being, and you profess to know Jesus Christ, then you should not be afraid of no witch, no warlock, no demon, no devil, no spirit, no imp, no sorcerer, no sex, satanic worshiper, occultic leader. You should not be afraid of any of them. Because I know I ain't. Between the 12 a.m. hour and the 3 a.m. hour, in the middle of the night, they call it the breaking of dawn, the breaking of the day, watch, prayer, the witching hour, the bewitching hour, because all sorts of things take place in the realm of the spirit. And then there are things that take, see, not, not just, uh, uh, the enemy is not just working in a realm of the spirit during these hours. He's also working in a realm of the natural. You may be saying, Prophet Bray, how he's working in a realm of the natural? Well, he has witches that work for him. He has sorcerers that work for him. He has incantators work for him. He has people that practice alchemy that work for him. He has witch doctors and voodoo doctors that work for him. He, those people that claim the ash project their bodies work for him during these hours these hours are so critical that those that have been assigned to be watchmen on the wall need to be up and praying praying I, I'm talking doing some heavy warfare praying Praying to stop the plans. Praying to stop the enemy. Praying to stop the plots. Glory to God. There's a lot of demonic activity during this hour. But I'm just saying, people, God, if you could just understand, if you could just comprehend it, if you could just grasp hold in it, if you could just grab it and, and just take the word and just begin to run with it. It's a lot of demonic activity. Activity. And no, I ain't no witch because I know some of y'all probably say, oh, she talking about this because she must be a witch. So she just giving her secrets away. No, I'm sad to tell you that I am not no witch, but I've been called one before, but I'm not no witch. I'm trying to educate you and school you on some stuff that you should know. Some stuff that your pastor should have told you. Some stuff that you should have learned in uh, intercessors training. Or some stuff that you should have learned from Bible study. Some stuff that you should have learned, period. To know what really takes place. There are a lot of dark portals that are being opened during, these times of, during this time of night. 
uh, things that are coming through and don't and, and people God do not understand uh, when spirits and demons come into your into your atmosphere they don't have no permission but you probably said well Prophet Barry why are they in my home why they keep bothering me why this and why this because somewhere along the line either a couple of things could have took place you have allowed them to enter into your atmosphere you gave them permission without even knowing you gave them permission or the thing is we used to say or we still say who you let in your house who you let cross over your threshold who you let touch you and matter of fact who you let pray for you that a demon or a spirit was on them that transferred itself off you and when you went home it just dropped and set up camp in your home and you like Prophet Bray all these spirits and every time I get somebody to come over my house and pray but it seemed like nothing don't work because do you not understand if a person let me tell you the enemy know when you know when you don't know you have power you have to have, you have to be strong in the Lord to pray a demon up out of somebody's house. Because if you're not, that demon going to leave and he's going to come back with 27 more of his friends. And then those seven more, uh, they're going to bring their friends and so forth and so forth. So your house is going to be a house full of demons. House full of stuff be going on. You have to be strong in the Lord. Have a strong prayer life. Don't go up there and, and you think, oh, it's 12 a.m. And I'm going to get up here and pray. I'm going to pray this demon up out of here. I'm going to pray these devils up out of here. Let me go get some oil and I'm going to take it in their house. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And it's 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And you're going to be like the seven sons of Skeezer. Because them demons and them devils going to look at you. And they're going to say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who you? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who you? And you're going to be the one to get your tail kicked. And they're going to stay right there. People, God, you got to understand this 12 midnight hour. People that are being influenced by the enemy. Because there are people that don't even know that they're being influenced by the enemy. That do their diabolical stuff during these times and nights too. Rape, rapers, murderers, killers. All sorts of people that are uh, kidnappers. Come on now. The list goes on and on and on. They do their, they do their diabolical stuff during these times. A murder, you, a, song, a lot of, about the majority of murders that take place happen between these hours. The majority of a lot of rapes. If you can go back over the years and over the years and over the years, some of the rapes happen between these hours. And I'm not just talking about women getting raped because men get raped too by other men and by women. Children get raped too by men, both men and women. Murders take place, child murder, adult murder. During these times of night, sacrifices are being taken place. If you live in a neighborhood where there was a lot of cats and you wonder why ain't no cats and you know ain't no Chinese person. I'm just saying, y'all. But, you know, uh, come on now. And you wonder what happened to all the cats. Well, those that do sacrifices, sometimes they will take animals and they will sacrifice and sacrifice those animals to their God or to the devil. I remember years ago where it was on the news and was in a newspaper. I think it was somewhere in New York, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know where, but in one, it was a park. It was a park and somebody stumbled on a whole bunch of cats, dead cats that was in a bag hanging from a tree. And they, I think they even passed it off as a joke or whomever 
or whatever. But the first thing I said, I said somebody was probably holding a ritual. And you know what they did? They took the cats and they probably hung them from the tree, slit that throat, put a bowl underneath so the blood can drip in the bowl. Come on, people, God, you need to know this stuff. I, I'm not I'm not sh I'm not telling you this stuff just to be telling you this stuff. These are the things that the Lord have shown me and spoke to me. Glory to God. You need to know this stuff. You need to know what you are really praying against. Because if you don't know what you're praying against, then you're then it's like you're praying for nothing. To me, it might to, to you, it might seem like you're not praying for nothing. But to me, if you don't know what you're praying for or praying against, it's like you don't, it's like you're praying blind. No, you need to know. God, I'm I'm taking a stand on tonight. And I'm praying every witch be burned. Because it says in the Bible, suffer not a witch. Come on now. We have the power and authority that God has given us to call fire down from heaven. Just like Elijah did. You got the power and authority in your belly, in your mouth, on the tip of your tongue to open up and call forth the fire down from heaven during these hours between the 12 and 3 a.m. hour. There are people that are being influenced by the enemy that astral project their bodies into your there. Let me tell you something. Somebody, let me tell you, I don't play with people that talk about they, they've been in somebody's home and all this type of kind of foolishness and stuff like that. I, I I had I even had leaders tell me I've been in your home and I'm like, oh, you did. And they say, yeah. I said the net I said don't say that. And they was like, why? I said, because you don't you didn't say that to the wrong person. And I told them, I said, the next time you come in my home, I'ma kick you back into your body. And I said, if I see you, I'ma kick you in your butt, into your body. Cause I don't play that. And there are people during these hours between the 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. hour and the 3 a.m. hour, the astral project. They, they do astral projection. They astral plane. And they and, and there are Christians that claim that they do. They or oh, I had an out of body experience and I was this place. And, you know, not don't get me wrong now. I, I've had those types of things. But when it comes to astral projection, I don't play that. I don't play that. When it comes to people that are being influenced by the enemy and they telling you, oh, I, I, I didn't ask you to project this place and that place. That's of the devil. That is nothing to play with. I've heard, I've I had people throughout the course of the year that have shared with me testimonies on how they have, you know, in broad daylight, because some things does take place in broad daylight. I had a woman, God, if I can remember years and years and years ago when I just started out in ministry and I ain't really known, I was kind of naive and I didn't know a lot of stuff, but I knew some stuff. But I didn't know some stuff. You ever had said that to yourself? You knew some stuff, but you didn't know some stuff. So I knew a lot of things about the realm of the spirit and the realm of darkness from what? What the Lord taught me. Because the best teacher is the Holy Spirit. And from what I was taught by sitting underneath the men and women of God that knew what they were talking about. And every word that came out their mouth lined up with the word of God in the spirit of God that was in me. And she said one time she was walking to a car and she saw a person sitting in her car. And she said it was a person that Astro project themselves into our car. Now, she said, I think she told me she she started kicking them and, and, and started shouting at them. And I was laughing. But you need to know because there are people that will come into your, they are spies. I call them spies. That's all they are. They spies. They, they are on assignment from the enemy during these hours, the 12 and 3 a.m. hour. They'll lay down in their bed or they'll lay on a chair 
or they'll sit on a chair or they'll sit in the middle of their floor and they'll close their eyes and they'll astral project out of their body and go wherever the wherever satan tell them to go to spy on you so the enemy can know what you're doing i'm telling y'all people god you need to know this stuff you need to know this stuff I, i'm 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 not telling you this stuff to be playing with you there's nothing i'm telling you that's if you don't believe me you need to go ask some of them older people in ministry. You know, some of them older men and women of God that's up in age, like 60, 80, 90 years old. They, they will tell you some stuff. They will share some stuff with you that they have encountered. I have even encountered things in, you know, during these type of hours of the night where I'm being transparent. There were one time where I woke up and I saw somebody at the foot of my bed and I just say in the name of Jesus you don't get out of my room and they went out there were times another time I was laying on, on my on my sofa when I was living in North Carolina and my window was cracked open and I felt a spirit come through the window in where I was at and I began to pray and I felt it leave out of the room there were times during this time of the on deep i'm talking about between the 12 and 3 o'clock hour i'm sharing my experiences because i don't know you know somebody out there you may have had some experience during these type of hours of the night and you don't know what to do you don't know who to tell and you and you need to know how to pray so these things will not take place so you can and can counter act the activity, the money activity that is taking place so that you can be able to stop the enemy from doing his diabolical deeds so that you can know what to pray. When God said, get up at one o'clock in the morning, it's a witch that live across the street from you. She's chanting. She's cursing somebody. And God said, get up at one o'clock in the morning and I need you to pray for X, Y, Z. Because you don't know why God told you, showed you, they need prayer. And then after you come out of prayer, God begins to show you the witch that lives across the street from you that knows the three people that God dropped in your spirit. And she's playing, she's cursing them. And God has you up at one o'clock canceling out that curse. You don't know why God gets you up at two o'clock in the morning and he tells you to just go, go in prayer. Quickly, suddenly, instantly. It's an urgency because some sorcerer or some warlock or some encanter or some necromancer is about to do something diabolical. So I need you to pray and I need you to intercede. I need you to pray for this region. I need you to intercede for this household. I need you to pray for that household because the enemy is up to something. He's about to do something and he needs you to cancel out that assignment between the 12 o'clock hour and the 3 o'clock hour. That's when the enemy and all his helpers, all his minions, witches, warlocks, shoesays, those are being influenced by the enemy. That's when the demonic portal is so wide open. That's when it's the spirit of uh, uh, demonic uh, activity is so heavy in the atmosphere as if you can walk into the room and you can feel it because it will hit you in your face. Glory to God. Glory to God. And you need to know these things. You need to know these things. There was another time. I don't know. I think it was in between, it was still between these hours. And I was at a friend house. And I was staying with a pastor. And down in South Carolina. And I was laying on a sofa. And let me tell you people of God. Let me tell you when the enemy want to get a hold of you. He will try everything in his power to get a hold of you. If you are not rooted and grounded in the word. If you're not rooted and grounded in, the, in prayer. If you're not rooted and grounded in the things of the Lord. The enemy will get a hold of you and he will get a hold of you quickly subtly and instantly and he will drag you down I was laying on a sofa my uh, my kids they were in another room and I was laying on a sofa 
And I, I barely had opened my eyes. I, I just don't know why I opened my eyes. And I seen a figure, a person that looked like a person, that looked like a woman. Because how many people know that, a, that the devil can disguise himself? A demon can disguise himself. It says in the Bible that the end, the end comes in a, he comes as a light, a false light. And he in the enemy, all his demons and spirits can disguise themselves as a person. Just like we never know when we entertain an a, a angel, you never know when you are entertaining a demon. Unless you ask God to open your spiritual eyes so that you can see what it is that you see. And I was laying on a sofa. It was, I don't know what time of the night it was, but I know it was in the wee hours of the morning. And I saw a person come out the room, go through the kitchen, come out the room. And I was laying down on my bed and then something jumped on me. And I thought it was my son because I remember that night me and my kids, we were playing and we was wrestling and stuff like that. My kids was like... 16, 15, 14 years old, and we were playing. And I thought it was my son because I told him, you know, I'm I'm going to be, I'm tired, I'm sleepy. And and this this entity jumped on me. And I was calling, I was telling my son, and I was saying, Brian, leave me alone. I said, I don't feel like playing no more. And let me tell you, God let me, God said to spoke to me that it's not your son. And I let me tell you, people, God, what that entity was trying to get a hold of me, and I slung it on the floor, and I and I just stomped my feet on the floor, and I said, "Don't you ever, 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 ever touch me again, or ever come at me again." I'm telling you, people, of God, you need to know what takes place between the 12 a.m. hour and the three o'clock a.m. hour so that you can counteract and cancel out that assignment that the enemy is sending out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you need to know these things. Even people, people, when they're people, we do devilish stuff to each other. We do devilish stuff to each other. You want to know how I know? Let me tell you. Let me tell you how I know we do stuff to each other. Glory to God. Devilish stuff. Mean stuff. Glory to God. First Kings. Glory to God. The third chapter, verse 20. Glory to God. What it say? It says... So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your man's maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dear child in my bosom. This this is talking about when the two women, both of them had kids. One of the women babies died in the middle of the night. Come on, people, God, in the middle of the night night and she waited until the other woman went to sleep took her dead baby and put her dead baby with the other woman and switched babies and they had to go to king solomon we do stuff to each other in the middle at night time we 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 do stuff the enemy, half of the time, we always say, well, the devil did this. And no, sometimes it be us. Sometimes between the 12 a.m. hour and the 3 a.m. hour, because the heavy demonic activity that is taking place in the atmosphere, because there are dark portals and uh, 
I mean, I'm talking about so many portals that have been opened during this time. And that stuff affects our thinking. It affects your mind. It affects your, uh, affects your whole being. If you are not rooted and grounded in God and prayer and the things and the word of God, that activity will begin to affect you and you will begin to find yourself doing stuff that you don't even do or never did in your life. Life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Between the 12 a.m. hour and the 3 a.m. hour. Glory to God. He waits until we sleep. Ain't that that's that's devious? We just read what happened in First Kings, the third chapter, verse twenty. She took the dead baby, y'all, while she was sleeping. The enemy at this hour he waits for a lot of us to go to sleep, to operate, to do what he want to do, to set up traps. Come on, that people. Let me tell you something. Accidents don't happen for nothing. While we sleeping, the enemy is operating. He's setting up accidents. He's setting up. He's setting up for somebody to uh, be destroyed. Let me tell you. Yes, he is. He's setting up for somebody to go to go to prison. He's setting up for somebody to to fall. He's setting up for somebody to be uh, 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 I mean all types of stuff. He's setting up for somebody to die, to shoot you, to kill you. He's setting up stuff between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. And he wait until you sleep so that you will not be aware of what's taking place. Isn't that something? Just like that woman over in 1 Kings, she waited until the lady, the other woman was asleep. And she switched babies. She took her dead baby and put it in the bosom in the other woman and took her live baby for herself. And that lady knew that that was not her child. The enemy is waiting for you to go to sleep so he can set up and operate to destroy you, to bring about destruction, chaos, confusion, mischief, mayhem. I'm telling you, you need to be aware of what's taking place. You can't be afraid. You cannot be afraid. God gave us authority. And the same power that Jesus Christ had, you have. He told his disciples, greater works that we shall do, greater works that they shall do in his name. That goes for you too. That goes for me too. That goes for all of us. Greater works that we shall do in God's name. You don't have, you don't have to be afraid. Let me tell you something. You got to be afraid. No witch. If you know God got you, you don't got to be afraid. I, I, I have many witches come to me. I had many witches. I mean, I had a grand witch. If nobody don't, if you don't know what a grand witch is, let me tell you. The grand witch is the leader of the witch coven. Like one more time. If you don't know what a hit, some people call it the head witch. Some people call it the grand witch. I don't know what they call it now. They could still call it the Grand Witch or the, or, the, or the Head Witch. But I had the Grand Witch of a Witch Coven right here in Virginia come to me and tell me who she was. And you know something? I told her, I don't care who you is. You ain't scaring me. Because she, she came to me, thought, oh, I was going to be so afraid. And I was going to be so scared. And I stood my ground and I said, I don't care who you were. I said, but you better get up out of here. Just like that. Because they, let me tell you, they are bold. Don't be afraid of no witch. Don't be afraid. I had, don't be afraid. 
God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love, power, and of sound mind. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you. Don't be afraid. I've, I've seen a lot. I, I, I'm not saying that I've seen, seen it all, but I've seen some stuff. And, and I've seen things. That's why I always tell people, ask God to, to show you, show you, show you. To we, we, too many times we keep our spiritual eyes closed. And we need to get and start opening our spiritual eyes more clear. I'm talking, I'm telling you. Now is the time to stop listening with your natural ears and start hearing with your spiritual ears. Stop seeing with your natural eyes and start seeing with your spiritual eyes. Because I'm telling you, when you get into a place and begin to hear with your, your spiritual hearing, you hear all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, you hear all kinds of stuff. When you get into the place of asking God, God, show me. God, show me what I need to see. Close my natural eyes. God, open my spiritual eyes so that I can see what it is that you're trying to show me during these hours. Don't be scared and don't get afraid when God begins to show you. Because he wants you to He wants to show you so that you can be aware. So that you can be aware of these things that's taking place around you. So see, see if you're not aware, then, then you're naive. I'm just being real. That's what the old people used to say. That's what the mothers of the church used to say. You, you, you are not, you naive because you just, you're not aware. It is okay that you said, you know, I did, I didn't know. And it's okay if you didn't know, but now you know, so that you will not be ignorant because it says in the word that God is not going to let us be ignorant to Satan devices. And between the 12 a.m. hour and the 3 a.m. hour, that's when Satan works his devices. God, is, God does not want us to be ignorant in doing these hours. We need to be aware of what's going on, what's taking place in the realm of the spirit at 12 a.m. Soon as that clock struck 12 and people are closing their eyes, the enemy is all smiles. And he's like, yes, I can do what I want to do because they sleep. They don't even know it. They naive. They stu they too stupid. That's what the enemy's saying. They too stupid to know what I'm doing because they in their bed sleep. What happened to all night prayer, 24 hour prayers? Nobody's doing that no more. I, years ago, I used to, I don't know if they still have 24 hours anymore, but years ago, I used to be a part of, I used to be a prayer moderator for one of the largest women ministry in the United States. And they had 24 hour prayer around the clock. And I used to, I used to have an hour that I would get on and pray. And sometimes it, there were when people couldn't make that hour, they used to call each other and say, hey, you know, I know you're doing this hour, but can you also do this hour? And sometimes I would do the 12 o'clock hour. Sometimes I would do an hour during the daytime. Or sometimes I'll do an hour in the evening time. Sometimes I would fill in for somebody or somebody would fill in for me and I would fill in for them. What happened to those those type of kind of prayer prayer calls? Because, see, it's going to come a time when you can't go up in no, in no building because they're going to lock that building up. And they're going to tell you you can't go in. They're going to put some chains on it. And if you try to go in, they're going to haul you off to jail. It's going to come a time when you have It's going to go back to house to house because that's what they was doing in the Bible. They was doing house to house. Sometimes they would be out in the field. Other times they be in somebody's house. What happened to the intercessors? Nobody is up counteracting these things that are taking place during the third watch. There, are, I know a few people. I don't know them personally, but I do know a few women and men of God that do do 12, 12 a.m. prayer. I used to do it. Sometimes if I'm not too sleepy, I'll, I'll do 3 a.m. prayer, but I'll get up and pray. 
Or sometimes if I can't sleep during the night and I'll just be meditating and I'll stop and pray and here and there for, you know, whomever God placed in my spirit to pray. Because I don't mind praying. These days, people people get an attitude when you ask them to pray because they don't feel like praying. We're all the watchmen on the wall, those that God has called to watch and pray. That's your duty. Watch and pray. Watch just as well as pray. But nobody is watching. Nobody is praying. Everybody doing what they want to do. But they should, instead of doing what they should be doing. I don't understand. I guess I never will understand. We need to know these things. Glory to God. We need to know. You need to know. You need to know. I don't have all the answers because I don't portray, I don't act like I do. I don't put on a facade that I do have the answers because I know I don't have all the answers. I still have to go to other men and women of God that I know personally that I trust that can give me a sound word to help me to understand certain things. And then if I can't reach them, I'll ask God, Lord, I, I don't understand. And God will drop a word in my spirit and then I'll get and I'll research and I'll open up the Bible or I'll type in a word and Google and get the meaning of it because I want to because I want to understand. I, I don't want to understand the things that God does for me, but I want to you. I want to understand his word. You don't never want to understand why God does what he, what he does for you, but you should get an understanding of his word because you're going to need it when they come and take your Bible away. When they tell you you can't read your Bible no more. When they come and tell you that we're going to take your, we, if you read this Bible, we're going to throw you in prison. If you, when we catch you with a Bible walking up and down the street, we're going to burn you alive. If we catch you with a Bible or catch you going in that church over there that we locked up, we're going to shoot you on the spot. And if you don't believe those things take place, ask them people in those other countries. There are other countries that you can't even read the Bible. If you get caught with a Bible, they either kill you or throw you in jail. Nine times out of ten, sometimes they might throw you in jail. The other time they might kill you right then and there. Ask those other people in other countries where Christianity is forbidden. When I say forbidden, it's forbidden. And there are people that want to know God. They want, they want to know God. And you may be saying, well, how do they know about God? Because they probably heard about word through word of mouth. Yeah, they have the internet over there. So they probably snuck on the internet and saw a preaching or a teaching. But Christianity, the practice of uh, uh, speaking Jesus' name will get you thrown in prison. We will be persecuted for his name. If you're going to reign with him, you're going to suffer him. You're going to die. Just, you, you just go ahead. There are still men and women in, of God to this day that are still in prison. Why? Because they refuse to denounce Christ. You need to be aware of these things. Nobody is really teaching the truth. But Jesus said the truth will set us free. It's in bias in a word. You need to know the truth. You not not just what goes on between the 12 and 3 a.m. hour at the third watch, but you need to know what's going on around you. You need to be aware. That's why God gave us the spirit of discernment. That's why when you have the spirit of discernment to, to give you option. Hey, red alert, red alert, red alert. The devil coming at three o'clock. The devil coming at two o'clock. Oh, he over there at the four o'clock. Oh, to your left, to your right, to the back, to the front. The devil coming, red alert, red alert. That's why you have the spirit of discernment. Are, you, are we really using the spirit of discernment? Are you really using it? That's you know the saying. I don't know if y'all 
grandmother or parents used to tell you this, but they used to say, be aware of your surroundings. They don't say that for nothing. People don't say that for nothing. Because you don't know what's around the corner. But your spirit man knows. See, while we are here in today, today is Wednesday. While we are here in Wednesday, do you not understand that your spirit man had already took a trip into tomorrow, which is Thursday. God is already in Thursday taking care of some things on your behalf, all for his glory, but also the plots and plans that the enemy has set up for tomorrow, they're being canceled out. Did you know that? Did you know that? There are people that God has assigned to your life that you don't even know that are assigned to your life to pray for you, to cover you. Did you know that? You don't even have to know who they are, but they know who you are because God dropped their name in, your, in their spirit. He said, pray for Sister Judy. Pray for Sister Karen. Pray for Sister Math, Brother Matthew. They don't even, they, they know you by the spirit, but you don't know them. And their assignment from day to day is to pray for you and cover you. Pray for your household and to cover your household in prayer. Because there are a lot of attacks that should have hit you in your household that did not hit you. Why? Because God has someone assigned to your life. Why? Because God has someone assigned to your children. Why? Because God, someone ha has assigned to your wife, to your husband, to pray and intercede on your behalf. That's why a lot of things that the enemy wanted to do to you, a lot of things that he wanted to do to your marriage, a lot of things he wanted to do to you personally did not take place because God has somebody somewhere around the country, around the world that you do not even know. You will never, ever, ever meet a day in your life praying and intercede and covering you all in prayer. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And you don't even have to, oh, why God told them to pray for me? Why they got to be praying for me? Because that's what some of us say in the body of Christ. I don't want her praying for me. Honey, if you want to live to see today or tomorrow, you better shut your mouth up and let them pray for you. Because you don't know what's going to take place the next day and the day after that. That's why God told them to pray and intercede and cover you. Glory to God. We need to be aware. God is not going to have us ignorant to Satan devices. So you need to educate yourself on, on things of the word of, of things of the Lord. You need to ed educate yourself and feed yourself. It's okay that you get fed when you go to fellowship. But it's, it's more important that you learn how to feed yourself the word also. We always say, go to, go to church, get fed the word. Go to church, get fed the word. Is that the only time you go on to get fed? No, you have a Bible. Some of us have ten, some of us got five, six, twenty Bibles in our house. Some of us got two Bibles in our house. So, and, and let me tell you, I'm being honest. I'm being transparent. I ain't going to lie because of, it, I'm not going to lie. There are sometimes I don't read my Bible. I'm not going to sit up here and lie and say I read the Bible every day because I don't. And God knows I don't. So I'm not going to sit up here and tell you, yeah, y'all, I read my Bible every day. No, I don't. No, I don't. Glory to God. So as this is well as I'm talking to you all, I'm talking to myself too because this the word the word applies to me too. I'm not exempt. As a leader, or if you are a leader, and you're listening. Let me tell you something. Just because you know the word, you ain't exempt. You ain't exempt from nothing. Let me tell you, you ain't bulletproof. You ain't bulletproof. You cut like everybody else. You bleed like everybody else. You cry like everybody else. You go through things like everybody else. You're not exempt just because you have a position. 
Do you not understand that God can sit you down and replace you? So just as well as we give the word, that same word applies to us too as leaders. Because God is going to hold us accountable. Come on, you got to learn how to apply his word to your life. The woman that God said early when I was talking to her, she said be a, she, she was a doer, not just a hearer. I said, that's right. Because you can't just hear the word and never do the word. You can't never, you can't do and never hear. You got to be a hearer just as well as a doer. So when you hear the word, you got to take action. You got to be a doer. So when God says, okay, I'm giving you this, I'm giving you this so you can be aware of what's taking place around you. I'm, I'm speaking these things into your atmosphere so that you will not be ignorant to Satan devices. I don't want you to be naive when these things take place during these hours. I need you to be alert at all times. I remember years ago, Paul S. Moore, Bishop Paul Morton used to say, "Spirit, your spirit man is on high alert. And we need to get back into that that order of allowing our spirit man on to place it on high alert so that you can pick up and discern things that take place there are many times i could be sleep in the middle of the night it could be two o'clock in the morning and i'll look up and i'll just say in the name of jesus There are many times when I'm asleep and I can sense when my spiritual eyes are open and I can see. And that's just why I tell people, you know, when it's pitch, pitch, black, black, dark, whatever is a blackout. People always say, Sharita, won't you get a flashlight? And I'm like, I don't need no flashlight. See? And they be like, Sharita, but it's like pitch dark out here. I'd be like, trust me, I can see. But you might bump into that thing that's over there. Trust me, I am aware of my surroundings. So I'm not going to bump into nothing because I can see that it's right there in front of me. We need to be aware of what's taking place in the realm of the spirit. Don't be naive. Don't be so sadity. Don't be, oh, I know what's taking place. Because some of us in the body of Christ, we so, so did he. I'm just be real. We so stuck up. We so on out. We so about self. You know, me, myself, and I. I remember years ago, Jim Curry made a movie about me, myself, and Irene. Because some of us like that. We're about me. Myself and I. That means you all about you. You ain't stutting nobody else. Glory to God. And that's not of God. Because it ain't about you. I had to learn that. It ain't about me. And I'm still learning that. To this day. Is that something? It doesn't matter how. I don't care how many years that you've been in ministry. God had to show me that. A couple of. I think a couple of months ago. He says, Sharita, it doesn't care how many years my sons and daughters been in ministry. Half of them, half of them still don't know nothing. You can be, you can be in ministry for 35 years and still be naive, still be just ignorant to Satan. You can be so ignorant that you don't even know that the enemy is plotting and planning against you. You can, I don't care how long you've been in ministry. Oh, I've been in ministry for 45 years. And I get this all the time when people always tell me, I've been in ministry for 25 years. How long you've been in ministry, woman of God? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it don't matter with God. God don't care how many years you've been in ministry. Because you can, you can, you can, been in, you, I don't care. You can been in ministry for 39 years plus and still don't be saved still ain't filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues still doesn't recognize the power of God still walking in error but you've been in ministry for 39 years plus it doesn't matter 
Because God said warning comes before destruction. Just because you are a leader, you are not exempt. You are not exempt to Satan devices. God doesn't want us to be ignorant. He, it says in his word that he will not have us ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant and so naive that we are not aware of what takes place. But oh, a lot of us in the body of Christ think we know it all. Well, I'm I'm be the first one to raise my hand, both my hands, and say, I don't know nothing. I'm serious. I don't know it all. I don't know the Bible from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelations, but I know my word. I don't proclaim to know. I don't pronounce. Yes, I know this and yes, I know that. Yes, I know that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Sometimes I, I still have to go to leaders and ask them to help me to get a better understanding. And so do another leader has to do the same thing. We are, you are constantly learning. Every day you should learn something new about the word of God. Every single day. Every day, God, God, and then, then don't get into the rap. Don't people always say God talking all the time? No, he ain't. Let me help somebody on tonight, because a lot of us in the body of Christ think that God talks all the time. No, He do not talk twenty four seven. No, He don't, because there are sometimes that God don't talk. I had a person, I had a leader tell me that one time, and he said God is always talking. I say, I, you know what? I sit there and I say, no, he don't. Oh, woman of God, yes, he do. I say, no, he don't. No, he don't. Yes, he do. You can't tell me. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to let you have that one. Because I'm going to just let you think what you think. Because I, I don't like to argue when it comes to the word of God. Because it gives me a headache. Did somebody say, well, God show us everything. No, God does not show us everything. I had to tell somebody that today. God is not going to show you everything. That's it's you know that's too much information for your brain to handle. I'm a psychology major, and we talked about how much information that your brain can handle. You have a section for your long-term memory and your short-term memory. And if God was to come down and tell you every single thing. You would not be able to handle that info, that much information. You will literally fall out in the floor. I'm I'm serious. You will literally fall out in the floor. I, I'm dead serious. You will literally fall out, fall out in the floor. You, 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 you're not, we just, you just can't, that's just, you know, you just, whew, God is good, y'all, God is good, God is good, that's all I'm saying, he is good, he is good, he is good, y'all. He is good. He is good. And I'm going to end it on that note. Do you know what really takes place on the 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. prayer watch? If you're just coming on, you will have to go back and listen in. Also, I will put this on CD for those that would like the CD. I'll be more than happy to get you a CD. No, I'm not going to charge. Oh, she going to charge us for the CD. No, you can have the CD free of charge. Matter that fact, I will give you a link to download it to your computer if you want it. God, I thank you for bringing us here on tonight, God. 
And God, all that was spoken on tonight, God, God, help us, Lord God, to and show us how to apply the word to our life, Lord God. God, we don't want to be ignorant to Satan devices, God, because you said in your word that you would not have us ignorant to Satan devices. God, Lord God, we ask that, Lord God, that you uh, just increase the discernment, Lord God, on the inside of us, God, so that we can be aware of these things that take place so we can know how to pray and stop the enemy in his tracks. In Jesus' name, I say amen. Once again, I thank everyone for joining me on tonight, glory to God. And um, next week, I'll be coming back with part four of Do You Know the Purpose of the Anointed Oil? Part four of Do You Know the Purpose of the Anointed Oil? You can go on my um, Facebook ministry page and you can listen to the part one and part two and part three. Glory to God, if you like a CD of the whole entire teaching, just inbox me and I'll make sure that I get you the CD in the mail. Glory to God. And once again, I thank everyone for joining me. May you all have a blessed.